Welcome to today's episode of CLCI Live, brought to you by the award-winning and ICF-accredited school, Certified Life Coach Institute. Sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episode. All right, here we are. Hello, welcome, welcome. So I I was enjoying the countdown music there. So welcome, everyone. Uh, We are CLCI, Certified Life Coach Institute, and welcome to this week's live. So every Tuesday, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Eastern time, and that would be 4 p.m. Pacific time, we go live and talk about different topics as it relates to coaching, um, to get that help there and a good, better understanding of what coaching is, and especially for uh, coaches, some of the questions that come up. So hello to everyone. If we take a moment, who do we have tonight? I'm Mike James. I'm one of the facilitators with CLCI, so I'm excited to be here. Who else do we have? Yeah, I'm excited to have you here, Mike. Uh, I think the rest of us outside of Kyle are the usual, so excited to be back uh, here again for you guys on Tuesday. Uh, Kyle, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself. He's been here before, but it's been a while, so refresh your memories. Well, he has come from a long way away to be with us tonight. <laughs> yes, right. right, right. Came from halfway around the world, um, but yeah. Kyle Rodriguez, I might be on some of uh, your guys' class as a technical director, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here today and be with you all and share some of the wonderful conversations we have. Awesome. Yeah. Ladies, yeah. Jen? Yes, I am Jen Long, and I probably talked to half the people watching on the phone at some point, which I love so much. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'm here every week, loving it. And Lisa, awesome. congratulations on yes, I have a new grandbaby baby. and delivered yes. on my birthday. How lucky is that? <clears throat> so, yes, double double so, celebration. I know it. We're <laughs> so very awesome. lucky, very blessed, very excited. Um, she's the beautiful um, baby girl, and um, we're just. So excited. Sleep so awesome. is of, you know, not so much there, but the rest of it is. And we're enjoying ourselves. I'm in Washington, not Colorado. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. You know, that when someone in your family is, uh, they're going through that process, they're pregnant, it's like you joke around, like, have them on my birthday. So for that to happen, that's awesome. Double celebration every year. So congratulations again with that. And welcome to all of you that are watching. Uh, We want you, feel free to interact in the chat. We're monitoring that. We're live right now on Facebook as well as YouTube. So interact with questions that you may have. So we have a topic that we are discussing tonight. Um, Coaching the clueless is the umbrella, (laughs) the umbrella topic. Coaching the clueless, like, wait, clueless? Like, they... They don't understand? No, coaching the clueless. Two questions in particular around that. And the first one, I guess, no particular order, but I I guess the easiest one to talk about um, is coaching someone without them knowing. Um, Can you coach someone without them knowing? So thoughts on that. And let me back up a little bit. I'm just excited to be here. Every time I can make it, I always share that I'm so excited to be here because I'm never available on Tuesdays, but it's awesome to be here and to share this space with everyone and uh, interact as well. Uh, We always encourage our alumni and everyone else to be involved in the conversation. So, so excited to be here in this space. So yeah, coaching the clueless. I guess first question we can discuss in this space is can you coach someone without them knowing? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, next. Absolutely. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Direct answer. Yes, you can. How does yeah. how does that look? What how about let's please. go around. Yes. I yes, do let's it. go I around do it all, and all talk the about time. how. <laughs> and I feel like I just do it in normal conversation yeah. now where I don't even catch myself, but it's a good way to interact. It's a good way to practice. And I feel like sometimes people just want to be heard. And uh, yeah, it's a good way to continue con- practicing asking questions and showing that, you know, you're involved in the conversation. Have you ever coached somebody and they asked you to stop doing that while you were at the <laughs> Yeah. So I've yeah. Done that. 
Yeah, that usually, part. <laughs> usually family or friends. It's usually yeah. only family or friends. People that, you know, I, I will do it. I, it's always been my nature to be interactive with people. Mm. When I started coaching way back when, how I interacted with had a slight adjustment. But in general, I was always interested. I always wanted to know, to know more. I'm asking questions and I'm truly interested in what's happening. What happens with family and friends is they don't necessarily want to you to know more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that as Lisa said too, that space of it's typically going to be those close relationships, right? People you see every day. And we it almost becomes a motor skill, right? Coaching and the coaching questions and the coaching model. And so before you know it, you're in the coaching lane and it's I want you to be Uncle Mike. Why are you question, Why are you coaching me right now? And it happens. And so that mm -hmm. will come up where someone says, you know, or you get the question, are you coaching me right now? And it's like, oh, maybe. <laughs> and so that process, What, as we're talking about that, what are some other ways that it may show up that we are coaching someone without them knowing? See, I don't get the, are you coaching me right now? I hey, stop coaching me. <laughs> right. They More pick up on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that and, and that's so one of you... those that's a space, right? Go, go ahead, Gene. I think you're about to ask the same question I was gonna ask. Yeah, how do you how do you how do you do it without someone picking up on it? Is that even possible? I I think once you're in you know, a deep conversation and a dialogue, mm -hmm. I would say yes. But if someone is feeling like you're behaving, and this is someone you know, you're not behaving in the way that you have accustomedly behaved with them, I'm not going to notice right off the bat that you're, you're doing your stuff. Um, so that's, you know, we usually say you're not really going to coach family or friends per se. You're going to have a better communication style that interaction, that um, curious questions, if it's something out of the ordinary with <clears throat> that particular relationship, they're gonna go stop coaching me, just like you've said, or if they're teenagers <laughs> and they're your teenagers. <laughs> right, stop coaching me right now. So, um, and one thing where Cal took it right is that space where it helps with communication, right? To, to ask questions and to actually be present and to hear people. But what about the other side of that? And I think of intention, right? What if it's on our part where we're using it when obviously someone doesn't want to? Um, so the question that we have, so doesn't the ICF, so International Coaching Federation, doesn't it say something about not coaching friends and family? Or is that only professionally? So thoughts around that. What about that? Not coaching friends and family. How do we approach that situation? I like I like what Lisa kind of had mentioned that sometimes you're you're talking to your significant other, your spouse, and they kind of like don't want you to do it. They recognize your coaching, they know what you do, and they just want to hear maybe you. They want to talk to you. They don't want to talk to the coach, Coach Kyle, Coach Lisa. They want to talk to who they fell in love with, who they built a connection with, and sometimes being able to give advice, which is something we don't necessarily always do as a coach, but we do as a person, it can be important to them. They want to hear, they want to hear you, maybe not hear themselves. And, and that's a, that's a good point. Even in, re, in relationship coaching, you know, the couples coaching that I do, part of the interacting between the, the, the couple, uh, sometimes that is then a, a request. I call it, put a label on it, right? Put a label on what you're, uh, boundary is and what your wants are, needs are. And in this space, I'm really looking to you to share with me what your feedback is, what your opinion is, what your advice is. So asking for that information. As we travel through um, credentialing ACC, PCC, and MCC, when you move towards MCC, it looks similar to before you've gone and gotten training. So what does that mean? That means you are going to start later once you break all your bad habits in the earlier stages, come back kind of around 
to not give advice, but give the client has given you lots of information. And so you'll help with that feedback and give it back with them. Yes, we're still doing that at the at the um, ACC and PCC, but really MCC, you've got much, lots more wiggle room in that space um, to really hone in on what that client is saying. So questions with a twist uh, could go that way, but not until you've been trained out of giving your advice from your perspective. Mm, that, yeah, that's a great point, I think, too. Um, I And just even with teaching the level one course, it's that idea of having that structure <laughs> early on keeps you from those things that you fall into. Um, that's just second nature, right? And so back to Anthony's question, when we talk about is that only professionally, I think it's important, especially as it comes to your coaching practice or your business, um, to keep that separation in terms of no family and friends for practice or maybe conversation, right? And if you reach out to that family, I'm reaching out to my brother or someone close to me. Um, do you mind if I practice with you? Great. And it actually could help. It can help your skills at coaching because now you got to remove yourself. You got to remove yourself from that attachment of brother or family. Um, so for practice, but yeah, professionally, I would definitely say to answer that uh, is something we want to avoid or uh, as a best practice to avoid doing. So another question that came up in that space. So what do you mean when you say people know you are coaching? What are you doing when they ask or say that? Uh, I'll start with that one. I think it goes back to one of the biggest parts, or um, I guess one of the main ingredients to that coaching is the questioning and how you're asking the questions. And uh, one of us shared already, you'll say, okay, well, wait a minute. Why are you asking me questions like that? Why are mm -hmm. you telling me to imagine? Or why are you telling me to think about it? Or how do I feel? I'm asking you right now to tell me. So uh, what are y'all's thoughts on that? Just, you know, what happens when family or friends say, hey, you're coaching me right now, or why are you doing that? Well, in my experience, you just stop being yourself, and they catch on to that. You're no longer being who you are, who they grew up with, kind of like what Kyle was mentioning earlier, um, who they know personally. You're now moving into that, that role of being a coach, which, again, is separate from who you are and that relationship that you've developed personally. So <clears throat> I think really it's just the, the big indicator is you are – not being yourself anymore. You're doing a job at that point. All right, Jerome, you say you're not being yourself. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. And what else? <laughs> Those are the key words they <laughs> nail. You have to be more sleuth-like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you, you hear that coming is like, oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't just say that. Um, <laughs> tell me more or, and what else? Or I think sometimes with me, so for uh, if my wife is watching this, I think one of the biggest things where my wife kind of gives me that look is when I go into tapping into feelings. How does that make you feel or different things? It's like, as Jerome said, it's like, wait a minute, that's not a natural mic response yeah. or husband response in this moment. So, okay, don't listen. I want to talk. Don't coach me right now. I think that's another way. Uh, but yeah, you, it's certain, certain things, even the way you phrase your words or questioning, especially where it's like, okay, this sounds like um, what you explain what coaching is. Mm -hmm. I almost I think become more I'll professional too when I'm in this coaching mindset. You know, I, my jokes, they're not there. I'm not witty. I'm not laughing. I'm like, I'm tuned. I'm listening to you because I want to hear what you're saying and then be able to talk to you about it. But Gosh, if I'm not coaching, if I'm talking to my friends, I'm probably throwing in a joke in there and laughing and changing the subject. You know, it's that my that professional uh, motor skill kind of turns on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Jan, what were you going to say? I think the uh, the question that people pick up on with me is always questioning when they they share a thought, and I'm like, huh, that's interesting. What has you saying that? What has you thinking that? Where does that come from? And they're like, they're so upset that I'm questioning what they're saying. And they'll say, hey, don't do that. Don't coach me. But the truth is, is that I actually think the question 
helps them. And so that's my problem is that I'm like, but this is good for you. Why don't you want this? And for me, that's the problem is that I actually think that I can be, I don't know, more purposeful in, in, in helping people close to me that I care about through asking them questions, then giving them advice. I used to give a lot of advice, but it was what was best for me. It was never what was actually best for them. I don't actually know what's best for them. And now I'm giving them the opportunity to find out and they don't want to know <laughs> or, or what it, or Tell how me. it serves. If I ask, how does that serve you? They're like, Jen, stop. But it's such a great question because usually it leads them to go, oh, it doesn't. And, and then they're like, wait a second, but they don't want to go there. Yeah. In that moment, Gosh, they're realizing that they now have to work, which is why I feel like it's a bit off-putting. They're now having to dig for their answers, which mm -hmm. is work. They, you know, I, I know my sister, she hates it because she just wants to dump sometimes when we talk, you know, just get stuff off of her chest. Mm -hmm. So when I ask her a question, I'll catch myself right. now. I haven't done it in a while, but uh, she'll be upset because she clearly understands at this point, I'm not going to give her any answers. She's got to find it for herself, which can be upsetting. You know, sometimes you just want to dump on, you know, those around you and that's about it. Yeah, I think that goes almost tying in what Jen said back to how Cal answered when we first started. It's the idea of it helps with communication, right? Because you're what we say in coaching, we're really being curious and interested. And so with that, as you shared, Jane, it's like, I really want to know. I, I'm I'm really trying to uncover and get more information here. But at the same time, now those skills develop more and maybe they're not used to it, right? They're not used to it. And um the idea comes forward of uh, this is a different way that you of how you communicate it for all these years to now you're asking me these probing questions and bringing it forward as Jerome said now it's it's some work that has to be done I got to think about it more I got to think about like where I am and what I'm feeling about and kind of the path forward as well because you're asking me these questions that it makes me stop and think instead of me just sharing and telling you everything and you're normally listening and agreeing affirming right i'm, I'm coming to you for my confirmation <laughs> i have that confirmation bias and jerome you're my brother just just agree and yeah. nod and i want to tell you all these things so that's a great point too and then so, it kind and of that's, go goes ahead, Lisa. back to what i was sharing that you know when you're with your family and friends you know you can ask them what what are their needs from you as well in that space you need to have this place where you are um, building on your thoughts or are you looking just for, you know, support system? Now that's not probably the way you're going to say it, but do you want me to be myself or do you want me to be the curious self kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that idea too, Lisa. It's, um, yeah. and I share that often. It's when someone calls me, right? Okay. Do you want me to be classmate, Mike? <laughs> do you want me to be soundboard Mike or do you want me to be coach Mike? Do you want me to be uncle Mike here or do you want me to be coach? Because I, I share with family and friends. I say, listen, I can't professionally, I can't coach you, right? I can't coach you and be part of my practice. You take you on as a paid client. However, you can have a conversation with your cousin Mike, your uncle Mike, your brother Mike, who happens to be a life coach. And that approach, Lisa, I think it's awesome because now, mm -hmm. I help build that that trust and rapport with them of, okay, I'm being vulnerable in that space of how do you want me to show up right now? Okay, hold on. Before, at the beginning of this conversation, let me pause you for a minute. How do you want me to handle this conversation? Do you want Brother Mike or do you want Coach Mike? So I think that helps as well, uh, which kind of leads to that next question um, that it's under this coaching the clueless. In the space of coaching, is there a place where we can coach someone how can you coach someone who doesn't want to be coached i don't want to be coached and some of the ways how that shows up or or how it happens can you i guess first thing let's start there can you coach someone that doesn't want to be coached i don't think you can affect i don't think so. yeah you can you can go through the motions but i don't i don't know that you'll get any real results from it. No, it's kind of funny. Sometimes in class, 
you know, as we are now on Zoom calls and interacting that way, it looks a little bit differently. The rooms are a little more private there. Um, when we used to be that in person, when I would go around to uh, different groups as we listen to the coaching um, behavior and mindset, there would be pretenders. <laughs> the pretenders trying not really to be coached. They didn't want to bring anything real to the table. There's... Um, but they also didn't, they wanted to help the person who was the, who was, who was the coach. So they weren't trying to be rude in any way, but that person who did not really want to be coached, there's nothing to latch on to. There's nothing to dig deep in. There's nothing to, um, really have any meaningful direction with. Because you can pretend, I mean, imagine somebody playing with dolls. You can pretend all kinds of different things, but nothing is going to be real. So in that sense, you can't coach someone who doesn't want to be coached. That is a place that is, you give it up. You just give it up. It's not a place for you to operate. Although it can be a question, what's preventing them from allowing the coach uh, exchange to occur, sometimes that will open things up. Ironically, that is a good conversation to have through those kinds of moments so that they can own whatever it is that their intention is. Yeah. And Cal, when I asked that question, I saw you kind of looking. Um, was there a thought around that question or something different? <laughs> you yeah. That's, about it? I that's funny that you, like, mm. you said that. I was... I was, thinking, I was applying my coaching skills, Cal. <laughs> I was thinking before I even jumped into life coaching, I didn't know what a life coach was. And so when I just hear the name, oh, I'm going to have a life coach. They're going to tell me what to do. They're going to direct me in my life. No, I don't want that. But when you find out that maybe a coach is there to listen to you and to help maybe ask you the right questions and be there as a, someone to rebound off of, you might actually appreciate the coach a little bit more. So going into it, oh, I don't want to be coached. I don't need to be told what to do. My life's fine. Sure, I'll sit through this class. I'll sit through a, a one-hour session or something. Or then you might start thinking, wow, this is not what I expected. This is so much better. I have somebody to, like Jerome said, just kind of unload off of and give how I'm feeling, talk about it, and that person to just sit there and absorb it, not tell you what to be, what to do, which sometimes you might have at home all the time. So it's actually something like you sometimes can coach someone that doesn't want to be coached because they don't necessarily know what a coach is or that they're being coached or what that process is. But you open them up to a different world. That's what yeah. was going on in the noggin. That's what my yeah, word I, can, I can agree with that. I think uh, there is a lot of mis misunderstanding, <clears throat> excuse me, around coaching. So if you fill that void in and you let, you know, kind of give someone an inside look as to what it actually is. I do think just kind of what Lisa was saying, what's preventing them from actually not wanting to be coached. And I think that's one of, one of the biggest reasons why some people, just like you, Kyle, before I had any idea what life coaching was, I'm like, who's this person going to, you know, who do they think they are to tell me what to do with my life? They don't know me. That's not coaching at all. So I think, yeah, that's a, it's a big reason why people prevent themselves from getting into coaching sessions sometimes. It makes me think about, too, uh, I guess, for the idea of what if you are hired by a third party, a sponsor, a coach, a parent to work with the youth. Mm -hmm. That's a situation where a lot of times, wait a minute, you're telling now you're going to put me with a coach. Maybe some other things are not working. You're going to put me with a coach. They're going to tell me. And back to what you all were saying, the idea where if someone is coming into it and not understanding what a life coach is you hear that word coach and we automatically think of we automatically think of coach someone's they're going to tell me what to do tell me when i'm wrong they're going to take me out of the game when i'm running the wrong play or not executing yeah. it the right way so in that space too it makes it takes me right to that those times where it's someone hiring you to coach someone and maybe they're not willing at first but through that patience that process in the coaching um as a coach having the patience to realize as Lisa said, and you all shared, what are some of the blocks or what's keeping them from wanting to do it in the first place? Well, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> now that mm -hmm. you're listening to me, wow, I'm sharing some things that even 
maybe the person who reached out to the coach are not giving me the opportunity to share. You're you're showing me patience that my parent doesn't, my coach, my teacher, uh, my advisor. So in this, this really feels comfortable. Now that that process could take a little bit longer sometimes, whether it's a, a teen or an adult. It may take a little longer to build that, but I think having the patience and trusting uh, the the coaching, you know, the coaching model and the approach, I think that helps a lot in that space as well for that person who, um, you know, hey. Well, I don't know. You get a lot of the, I don't know, and I'm not sure. I don't want to really be here right now. Or is this in that first session? Well, I, well, tell me what's going on right now. Well, uh, it wasn't my, it wasn't my idea anyway. So (laughs) I'm just here because my mom told me or my coach told me or my advisor. So I think that's another uh, way of looking at that as well. um, How we can, how we can go through that process and, um, how we can honor the coaching model too to help someone to break those barriers. Because as Cal, as you shared in Jerome, I think that's a big thing too. People have their preconceived notion. If I do anything right, I have a, a preconceived notion of what I think it is. Then when I experience it, it's like, oh, okay. So you're not trying to direct my life and tell me what to do. So I think that helps as well. I can tell you another example where <clears throat> it becomes uh with the couples right they're coming in they're sharing things and then they're sharing things they didn't expect to share because the flow is really in the process then what happens they go home and then they fight about it. i can't believe you told her that she's going to judge all that like that. right but the next session they come in the cool thing about that is because they feel safe in the presence of the coaching model and the mindset is that person will bring up in some fashion, it will come out in a session where they went home arguing about something um, that they didn't intend to bring up because they thought they thought whatever they thought there was going to be judgment in the room. There's a, right. So that brings the opportunity for more communication and boundary setting. So even when and if it happens, there's things that can turn around in that moment and can build from there. Yeah, and I think the question, too, going back to what I was sharing, like in a case where maybe a sponsor or someone else has hired you to now work with the client, Mm -hmm. whether it be an adult or a teen, um, uh, the question was asked, Brooke asked the question, is it the coach's job to change their minds or or how does a coach do that? From my perspective, and then y'all can chime in, for me, as I approach it, I wouldn't take on the job or, or the role of changing their mind because I don't necessarily want to change their mind. Mm-hmm. I want to show up because that I always say this in classes too. I think the superpower in coaching is presence and showing up. So I want them to experience what that is as I show up and go through that coaching. And I want them to begin to make up their mind because there could still be a resistance to where now, as we started the conversation with someone that doesn't want to be coached, technically – coaching can't work because there's no willingness on their part to maybe receive that help or at the very least be open to it. Um, So as I'm holding that, as I'm holding that space of coaching, now I want them to begin to make up their mind and it may come to the point where, okay, is this what you want? And when that comes up as of no, then now we can proceed it, you know, whether it's severing the ties or finding what they actually need in that moment. But I think that, um, I think that's a great way to, uh, for thinking about it. I don't want to necessarily change their mind. I just want to show up and proceed with that coaching and hopefully the value that they get from it, which is totally different than maybe what they expected, which is maybe one of the reasons why they didn't want to do it in the first place. Maybe the value that they get can change their minds over time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Some of the research uh, no. that uh, can you hear me. Go ahead, Jen. Mm-hmm. In some of the research that we did, it mentioned that the tipping point typically for someone who doesn't want to be coached is when they recognize they're in a space of non judgment. When they realize that, that is typically when they start to come around and go, oh, wow, this is good. This is nice. Like you don't. You didn't maybe expect that when you came into it and now they're receiving that and that is potentially what what gets them to turn around and actually start to 
be into coaching <laughs> is recognizing this, that safe space. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is somebody, Dan, I forget if he mentions this in level one or level two, where he speaks about um, coaching a younger person who I think uh, under 18 or around that age of 18, uh -huh. where it took him a little while to get through to him. Um, but what they had started talking about where they actually developed some rapport was when he spoke about um, sports, he was talking about football. So sometimes it takes a little while. You've got to get that rapport going. Um, but once again, that client feels a connection with you, then that's, you know, kind of when that, that point of unraveling and being vulnerable starts to begin. Yeah. Because at that point they trust you. Right, right. And I, I, I think that's a almost a foundation too of the coaching really working when they build that trust. When you, you know, through building that rapport and they start to trust you and now they're open. Uh, we think of coaching in that co-collaborative space, right? Where we're working with the client on their goals, but it's a collaboration. And to get to that space, it has to be trust. I have to trust you. Okay, Jerome. All right, now I get it. I understand coaching. Now I trust I trust Jerome in this coaching space. So with the client, if, if we go back to that client that doesn't want to be coached, uh, the question came in, redirecting a client that doesn't want you to coach them. Now, this is a client that they're signing up for coaching with you as a coach. How do we navigate that, that client who... Um, that client who is is waiting, maybe they're wanting you to come from a space of coaching more into consulting or mentoring. Um, they're wanting that praise, advice, guidance, or agreement. What does that process look like for us to navigate that space? Um, listen, I don't want you to coach me here. Just tell me what to do. Well, listen, uh, Lisa, I came to you so you can tell me what to do. So tell me, <laughs> you're the expert here. How do we navigate that space? I, I usually, in that especially beginning phase, go, you know, I, I definitely have opinions. I, I could have advice, but I've never done a day in a walk in your life. You know, let's really look at what it is you want and where you want to go and, and how you perceive this. So I'll just turn it back around to them so that they can. I'm not denying that I have advice. I'm not denying that there isn't something there. But then I'm re-engaging them and opening the floor, turning that table mirror back to them so that they're focused in and engaging on what they want and, and what their session needs to look like. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing the role here of the client. Mm -hmm. Lisa, you know what? I, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, I, I don't like it. I, I, I hear what you're saying, but um, I don't think I like it. Kyle, man, listen, do you have any availability just... You know, I hear that. I know what Lisa said, and I, I don't know if you know Lisa, so I don't want you to go back and tell her, but <laughs> I, I just wasn't feeling it. She was telling me, you know, about my life experience, but what what's your thought on that, Cal? Can you help me, man? Like, I, she asked me about what's important to me. I really don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, and I'm just looking for some help. You, you got any advice or something you can help me out with, man? Man. I would refer you out to a mentor, somebody that is, that is their job. Cause if you're looking for someone in the, your industry, if you're looking for that, it's not a coach. If you're looking for someone to talk and find the, your inner self a little bit more, I'm here, we can practice it, but that's not who I am. That's not what I do. And I would look for somebody that, that is doing that and find you a mentor. Okay. I, I like that. Jen or Jerome, any thoughts there? Because I, I, something Kyle said I want to bring mention to for for all of the coaches that are watching as well. Um, any thoughts on that? They, that client who they're wanting, hey, just, you know, give me the advice. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> any thoughts on that? It is, it's, a, it's a completely different job. Um, there's liability that can kind of come into play when it comes to that. Uh, if you're consulting somebody, um, you're playing with a whole, you're playing a whole different game than uh, with, with coaching where there isn't a whole lot of liability when it comes to, you know, a conversation that you're having with the client. But consulting and telling someone what to do professionally <clears throat> can get you in trouble if you do tell them to do things that aren't maybe necessarily legal, for, for instance, or, you know, anything of that sort. Yeah, because Jerome told me, like, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know you were going to call, you know, I didn't know you were going to, the authorities were going to call me. My coach told me to do that. Jerome told me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jen, any thoughts, any thoughts in that space, Jen? 
Yeah, I, I feel like I would probably coach them back in response, like, huh, what has you thinking I know what's better for you than you, you do? <laughs> That's just my natural instance that I would just coach that, you know, someone asking for advice. I would just coach on that. <laughs> coach the crap yeah. out of And maybe, so, maybe yeah, I would coach them. <laughs> A, a little bit. So, so a little, but there is a little twist at some point. Is if if something does squeak out of you, um, you know, a lot of the times people will say, "Well, that's my advice." That gives everyone eh, not so much. But now and again, even even seasoned people like us will something will sneak out. The way you do that backtrack is how does that fit for you? How does that work? Does that work for you? What are your thoughts around it? What works? What doesn't work? What are your thoughts? What's the next step? What's another direction? So opening up that dialogue, getting that flow going. I have a ratio, like it's my made up ratio, but it's something that usually makes the point, a one to nine ratio. So one, one time I can throw something on the table to kind of get the ball going or to keep it going, depending on the strategic planning that I have with that particular client. But once I have thrown that one piece, I'm not going to be throwing any more. It, it is to help them feel more comfortable and get into the flow of the experience of coaching and the thought process. And so I, I love all the responses there because it's it's a little bit of difference in how all we, all of us responded to that. And I think mm -hmm. going from what Cal shared and coming back from that, at some point, if you are not comfortable staying and showing up wholly as a coach and in that space, it may be time to refer out, especially mm -hmm. on the front end as, as you've established, you've taken the time to establish what coaching is and what it is not and what happens in a space where we come to the point where it's something else that is desired by the client. Right. Um, so that's one of the things, but I, I say it's always for me, I think of it as a challenge, as a challenge. One of the things that uh, Lisa shared is, you know, uh, I, you know, I would love to tell you, but what's important for you, what comes up for you as you're thinking about that? How does it land for you? I love Jen's approach that, that question there of really coaching them through that. And here's another thing in this space, I, when people ask me, just random people, friends, family, who, whomever, when they see, oh, you're a life coach. Now, what is that? My definition, how I explain that is that a life coach is someone that should help you discover that you're your best friend. Your best friend calls you or reaches out to you. You have the advice. You make them feel good. Um, you have the questions, all of these things. And when they get off the phone, they're like, Yes. So glad I called Cal because I knew he was the person I needed to talk to. But then when it becomes us, it's like we're lost. We're stuck. Right. So it's helping you discover that you are your best friend. The solutions are there. So in that space, the, the client who's wanting, tell me, tell me. OK, I, I hear what you're saying, Jen. In this space, if you were your best friend or if you were me, what would you want to hear? Mm -hmm. Or what you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. And just that redirection a lot of times it's like, oh, okay. They can even be on to it. Like, I see what you did there. <laughs> you got me out of that pattern. But it causes them to think. And then you automatically, yeah. they, they get back in that lane of, all right, got it. Yeah. You know what I would want to hear in this space is that, and you, you know, you kind of uh, interrupt that flow of that pattern. And then what Lisa said too, they're, there's a space when we, we talk about that um, in that space of always making sure that anything offered, we come back to how does, what does that mean for you? Or how does that land for you? Because it's still about what works and what doesn't for them in that space. But um, I love the way with five of us, we had kind of five different answers to that question. And I think that's beautiful because people watching, you see the, um, the possibilities with coaching, you know, we think of it as it's so narrow. It's just all questions. It's all this is that, but it's a lot of possibilities um, in that space. Uh, we had another, another question that came in there. Um, I think Lisa, you kind of addressed that, that first part um, about it being sneaky. So should a coach acknowledge a mess up moment when they mess up? Um, I'll start. I've been putting it on the table for all the, I'll start with that. So a mess up moment. I would say it's all in the way we do it, right? 
when I was uh, when I was in college, I always shared this story sometimes. Well, not always, but I share this story often in level one is when I was in college, I was on the step team. So with stepping, you practice and you have this performance that you do or think of any any other performance or if you've ever done any type of performance and you practice, practice, practice for this one show <laughs> for this one time. Well, who did the practice? You did. No one in the audience knows mm -hmm. that you messed up until you have the oops face. You're doing <laughs> something, you go, and then if you would have kept going. So that's one thing is I find comfort in that, that my client doesn't know the protocol. They don't know the framework. Even in the space where we're in classes, I tell the, the you know, if you're the coach in this space, imagine you know nothing that you're not in this class, fully be a client. However, that could help tremendously with rapport and trust when something happens or it may slip out. You know what? Hold on, hold on, Lisa. Let me rephrase, rephrase that for a moment. That was closed. That was closed into question. Let me rephrase that. Take that off the table. Give me a moment here. Just that little moment sometimes, it can be like, oh my God, what's the, what's sometimes the understanding? Oh, you're a life coach. You got it all together. <laughs> you're perfect. And so in that space right there, oh, wow. Lisa paused in the session that that's amazing. That right there can take trust through the roof. So I think sometimes it's a space to do it. And I guess it's a matter of how we do it. Um, so y'all's thoughts on that. I just think sometimes it could be, it could be great. It depends on, I guess it depends also on the severity of the, of the mess up. Yeah. I think I, that's, Oh, go ahead, Lisa. No, no, no. Go ahead, Jerem. <clears throat> I was just going to say really quickly, just um, I'm right there with you, Mike. It, it can just tremendously help with rapport. There is no perfect coaching session. There's no such thing. So um, for you to go ahead and point out, if you realize that you went ahead and tripped up a little bit, um, shows humility to your, your client. And I think astronomically can increase the level of trust that they have in you because you are at that point looking out for them in their best interest. And that's very obvious in that moment. <clears throat> And I would say, it's <clears throat> have ownership of your words, meaning mm -hmm. I don't know what's best for you. I have no clue, right? Here's, this came out. See if any of this works for you. If it doesn't, let's throw it away. Move on. What else would come out from that? And there's some great building that can happen from that, that oops <laughs> so there's times that i will strategically and there's some this is the strategic part of coaching knowing when things work when things you screw you know when to um address it when not to address it but to keep moving forward there's there's a deeper level with coaching as you get more proficient with your behavior mindset and interaction with your clients and knowing your clients on when things need to expand or contract, <laughs> as it were. Um, I'm thinking of some moments. Let's see if I can come up with an, a, an example where I made the mistake. Uh, right now, nothing's coming to me. It's been a it's been a little piece since I have been a newbie in that space. So when I have dropped something and didn't intend on dropping it. It really just became about that recognition and listen to them and really invite them to to lead that conversation if I did one of those oops. I think that's what I would say there. Jen, Cal, any thoughts in that space? The, the mess up. Do you address it? Do you acknowledge it? What are your thoughts there? Jen? Um... Uh, just mess up is, I don't know. I, I don't, I guess I don't consider anything that I do in the coaching session to be a mess up. Now I can make, I can make mistakes, but it's not a, it's not a mess up. Um, a, I can cite several examples as a new coach. I had one the other day where the screen froze and when it came back, I keep going to the client and she said, okay, where was I? And I, I had lost it. I didn't remember where she was. And for a moment I was like, oh, I should know I'm a bad coach. And then I was like, just be honest, just, just be honest. I said, you know what? I got so caught up 
caught up in that frozen moment. I don't remember. As soon as she started talking, I said, oh, that's what you're talking about. You know, and it was no big deal. It could have been a big deal. I had made it a big deal and been all insecure about it. It wasn't. I was like, I had a human moment in this coaching session. Not a big deal. I acknowledge it and kept moving on. There was another coaching session where I didn't feel as energetic and as focused as I normally am. And I remember sometimes getting in my head, like, what's going on with you today? Why, why are you, you know, having this struggle? And, you know, the, the client had no idea that I was experiencing that struggle. And I, I know that for a fact, um, we, I, I actually, um, she had a similar issue happen in her coaching and I used my own example and I said I've actually been having that same experience through this coaching session have you noticed and she was like no oh that means my client noticed <laughs> so again I've had moments where I realized like the humanity involved in coaching good it's not a mess up and so I think I embrace it and I, I'm more just honest about it rather than trying to hide it. Um, but I definitely don't call it out. There's no reason for that. Most of the time it goes unnoticed in my experience. Yeah, I, I like that too, because that's a perspective right there, Jan. It's like, uh, you know, perspective, how you go into it. That also guides, um, that also kind of guides uh how you move forward that path forward so the perspective of no mess up i don't know why i just thought of bob ross <laughs> with the trees tiny little mistakes i thought of that that perspective is everything and it kind of helps us keep our mindset good as well so i really i really love that and it's interesting you said i was like yeah i, I like that so and and you said something there it's that human that human experience it's we're all living life happens things happen sometime and i think it's a matter of us it goes back to the example i gave not making the oops face uh, and us not making a big deal mm -hmm. out of it as we as we go to that uh through that process but as you're saying right. that there's many of us that that are are really hard on ourselves as mm. mistakes happen guess what get a coach <laughs> Because yeah. it's it's going to be an important piece for you to continue learning and growing within yourself as well as you go along with along this process. You cannot expect your clients to do the work if you're not willing to do the work yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. extend to yourself some grace in that space and get a coach <laughs> because it helps. You can actually see it right that see that firsthand and things that you notice in that uh, which helped me out for sure. When I first started, that was the first step. Okay. I'm leaving this class. <laughs> I'm getting a coach. So it definitely helped. So one thing we were talking about earlier, that client who doesn't want the help, right? That client who they really just don't want the help. So can we coach them? But now in this space of that client, right? That really, we, we talked about if they're, they're wanting the advice or they're wanting you to kind of give them some guiding there. Well, what about the client that is literally, they don't know. They don't have the answers. They're not sure. Um, maybe it is really coaching the clueless. They have no idea. I don't know. Um, how do you navigate in that space uh, with that client or how do you help them with that work or that path forward when a client genuinely doesn't know? Thoughts there? I think there there comes a, a bit of anxiety sometimes and someone may be expecting you to know. So I think maybe in that space, giving giving your client some space is a great idea. Sitting back, sitting in that silence, giving them time to collect their thoughts um, because I think we all can agree. We, we do have our answers. We have the answers to, you know, most of the things that we deal with um, and typically the best answer. Um, so if you give your clients some space and some grace for them to go ahead and realize that you're here for them and you're here so that they can get the answers that they're looking for, um, I think they can eventually find that out for themselves. So sometimes they need permission to experiment 
to get it wrong, to not be perfect, to not have to get it right, to play, right? So sometimes they'll need that permission that this is not going to be in stone. We can write it in the sand and erase it if it doesn't flow the way that they want. I like that. I think also, too, in that space, a lot of times I'll say, I'll, and I'll share this, is sometimes it's the power and just playing the opposites. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the opposites. A client has come to that space, well, well I don't, I really don't know. I, I really, you know, okay, what do you know about the situation that you're currently in? What do you know about how you're feeling in this very moment? Okay, I know this. I know this is, this is what's taking place. I know this is where I want to be some things start to unfold when we just flip the script on, okay, this, that focus, right? What I'm really focusing on. I don't know. I don't know. What do you know in this moment? Right. Um, Also, you know, I just, I don't think I could, I don't think I could do this. So I don't know if I'm ready. What if you were ready? You know, what if you could do it? The opposites a lot of times is what I talked about earlier is refocusing. And now I look at it a different way and I notice, oh, okay, there are some possibilities out there. Because what Jerome uh, shared, right, if we don't all have the answers here, one thing we do all have (laughs) is the World Wide Web. At the touch of a button right here, these computers we walk around with every day. So it's, it's not the case of, I can't find the answers or even I don't have them uh, inside. What Lisa shared is I think is important and powerful too in that coaching space. Sometimes it's the permission, like whose permission do you need to move forward? Whose permission do you need to find those answers? And it's like, oh, it's me. It's me. I think I, I need to give myself that permission to move forward. Any other thoughts in that space? Like that client there who um, they're, you know, the, the, I don't know, how do you get them out of that? Do you want to elaborate Kyle? I, I sure. see it in the private chat. You dropped something I'm trying to understand. It. Yeah. You know, I, I don't necessarily know if it's the right thing to say. So I'm in a sense, posing this back as a question, but, but if there's a client that has no idea what is going on, they don't know what they're searching for or seeking. It might be the opportunity for you to share what you do. What's your elevator speak? What are you doing as a coach? It might generate some thoughts. If you're working to be a better professional, if you're working, whatever you whatever your niche is as a coach, it's the time to maybe share that quick 30 second spiel. This is what I'm I'm doing. This is my how I specialize as a coach. And see if that generates. Oh, you know what? That is what I'm looking for. I, this is why I look at your website. This is why I'm now this is what i'm looking into i think that's definitely an option that can help water the seeds right of them wanting to move forward or almost like i think of that cal too as that space of reminder reminder of why you reached out to me because it's also that idea that something got you to this space barring what we talked about earlier um a sponsor or someone getting you to coach you know someone else But outside of that, something got you to email, to contact, or call me. So tapping into that, leaning into that sometimes, that's another great question. All right. So if we can do just a gentle check-in here, what brought you into this space? I think that's another great way of looking at it. Uh, Lisa? Don't forget that silence is golden, right? Mm. Having you know, that interaction, what brought them in and, and be comfortable sitting in silence with them, you know, share with me, take a moment, see what percolates for yourself and then just be quiet as the coach, because always someone's going to put something in there to fill it, uh, to fill that space. And we don't need to be the one to fill that space. That's what the client will do when they're ready. Yeah, power and silence, letting it marinate, letting it process. I talked about that all the time because sometimes in that silence too, just like maybe you're thinking of what to say next, they're thinking of, uh, they're letting some things process, you know, and they're still thinking about uh, fully answering that question or maybe the issue or the problem that they're talking, that you're talking about in this space. So I love that. So as we kind of conclude here, any thoughts, any thoughts or, or takeaways from the bunch? Uh, thank you for all of those who uh, shared and commented there. 
uh, the questions that came in. Um, we see you there, Brooke and Sue, Anthony, some of you who dropped questions there. Um, Brooke mentioned earlier, had a lot of questions. So thank you, Brooke, for all the questions. <laughs> it was awesome and timely. Any closing thoughts from everyone? I, I still feel like I'm... Oh. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead. Okay. I still feel like I'm going to still practice coaching the clueless. Even if I'm at a grocery store and I'm talking to the clerk for a moment, I might ask him some questions. Even if I'm meeting a guy for the first time, just we're hanging out, we're in a group, and I want to, I want to get them to talk, I'm going to start practicing my coaching. It's just practice, practice, practice. And if I could do it to the clueless, I'm going to do it. Um, but I will hesitate when I am doing it to my family, to my friends, especially when I drop that tell me more and they immediately say, hey, stop that. You know, that's when I can turn that coaching uh, mechanism off. But uh, this was wonderful talking to you all about it. Love it. Lisa? Thanks, everyone, for being here. Mike, especially, brand new. Kyle, welcome back home. Jen, as always, it's beautiful. Jerome, awesome. We miss you, Brooke and Anthony. We want you back next week. <laughs> uh, what do I have to say? I just I think coaching is amazing. It shows up in everything, really, and who I've always been. The times that um, people in my world that don't want to be coached, just like Kyle said, I'm, I'm truly curious. And then I'll ask them, how do I ask, how do you want me to interact with you? Because I am truly curious. So I'm going to honor that boundary that they're presenting and ask them, how do you, how do I interact with this? So ask questions with family and friends so that um, you understand how they are wanting and what they are wanting from you. The other things that coaching the clueless, you know, that's pretty much, you can do that. Coaching someone who does not want to be coached, it's its not necessarily easy to do, but many times it can turn around. Uh, so I would, I would take your time. Don't overthink it. Don't rush it. Stay the calm. Jen? Um, that is the biggest thing I'm taking away is what you said about asking the person, I'm going to say, how do you want me to respond? Do you want me to respond as Jen or do you want me to respond as a coach? Cause I can offer you either what's best for you and let that person decide. I'm realizing I'm not giving the person an option. I'm just choosing. Well, I think coach Jen is better for you. <laughs> and like, I'm just forcing it on them. Maybe just want, like maybe my most wants her daughter. She doesn't want a coach every time we talk. And um, yeah, I'm doing it with my friends. I'm doing it with everyone. And I'm realizing like, I just need to give that consent back to them and let them choose. Um, because if they don't want coach Jen and they just want Jen as a friend or family member, uh, that's fine with me. Even though I think they would benefit from coaching, it still is fine with me. <laughs> as, as you were talking, Jen, I, I, I am in situations with family or friends, and I go, wait, how am I supposed to show up here? <laughs> I'm doing that same thing. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. I, would also, say, I would say if you can communicate um, and think for yourself, you're coachable. You're, you're definitely coachable. Uh, it just takes that shift in perspective sometimes, which can happen uh, in so many different ways, um, which is why I think, you know, we can kind of go back to there not being a perfect coaching session. There is no perfect outline for a coaching session. You have to play around. We were speaking about it earlier. You have to make the mistakes. Your client has to make some mistakes to hopefully get to a point mm -hmm. where they're comfortable actually getting to the answers that they're looking for. And that's my piece on it. Yeah. I love that. No, no perfect coaching session. Um, but around that thought, my client arrives to me whole and complete. And in turn, I arrive to the coaching space whole and complete. So I go with the flow and let it unfold as it may. And I think that's the beauty in coaching. Lisa, you were going to add something? Well, I was just thinking about Jerome. 
um, mentioned here a moment ago that, you know, mistakes. Okay, you're not going to want to make a ton of mistakes. That's true. You don't want to make a ton. But the, the, you are in that curious position and you make, make, let's say, a mistake. It's usually a really golden moment because something usually shifts in that space. So I run with it. When Jen said, you know, I'm not really going to announce it because they're not really going to know. And that, that's one of those indications in those spaces. When I have done something like that, I'm not going to necessarily, oh, go, oops, I shouldn't have done that. I need to retool that. I'm, I'm going to stay that course and follow their lead and how that applies to them. Mike? Yeah, drop dropped in the private chat and uh <laughs> Cal share, but yeah, I hear I hear Dan's voice right here. Things are happening as they should, right? And everything yeah. happens for a reason. And so I think trusting the process, we hear that and it becomes cliche, but it's really true. In this mm -hmm. space, trusting the process, I think that's the beauty. So uh thank you again. I, I hope that it's not this long before I can attend again. It's always a pleasure to be in this space with the awesome team there. So uh, again, thank you all. Thank you to everybody that watched on joining us, Certified Life Coach Institute, where we certify you in three days. Yes, three days to be a life coach. Join us every Tuesday, every Tuesday, six, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time and 4 p.m. Pacific. Be sure to share us, comment, share, comment, so like, much. subscribe. Thank you all. Have a great night. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Once again, this is brought to you by Certified Life Coach Institute. We're an ICF accredited school who certifies our life coaches in three-day online intensive courses. In addition to other podcast episodes, feel free to check us out every Tuesday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube or Facebook for our CLCI Lives, where we get together and discuss various topics that are centered around sharpening your skills so you can become a better certified life coach. For more information, feel free to visit us at certifiedlifecoachinstitute.com. Until next time, be well.